My name is Kia, and I'm here to share a story with you. Some of it's mine, some of it is shared by many of us as students at the law school, and some of it belongs to you. My part began differently than most others might. My mother's family was Cherokee and Norwegian from around Oklahoma, and my father's family was Métis with Scots-Irish roots. My mother worked as an Aboriginal counselor out of our home, using Indigenous methodologies to help her clients use visualization and mindfulness exercises to address often deeply held trauma. My father worked as a journalist and a photographer here in Toronto in his early years, before the 60s came along and prompted him to give up most of his worldly possessions and live on a beach in the West Coast for nearly a decade. He lived as an artist and eventually found his way to Toronto where he met his mentor Duke Redbird, catalyzing his lifelong pursuit of advocating for the rights of Métis and non-status Aboriginal peoples. Eventually finding himself in the room while the inclusion of Métis was negotiated into Section 35 in the 1982 Constitution. One of my earliest memories, and one of my earliest legal teachings, though I didn't realize it at the time, was going for a walk with my mom in the summer, and I jumped and pulled a hanging branch of a tree and started playing with a leaf, pulling it apart down the veins, and after a few seconds, my mom uh, slowly paused, looked down at me, and asked, well, what are you going to give back to the tree? I looked confused, and so she reached into her purse, pulled out some tobacco, and put it in my hands, saying that I should go and scatter it around the trunk. And so I did it, and we kept going, and that was it. I've thought about that moment again and again over the years, and how, despite her saying very little, I felt intuitively the piece of the relationship that I'd missed, that I had treated a part of the world as a mere means, that I'd created an albeit small gap in the network of our reciprocal uh, relationships, and it needed to be repaired. As time went on, I understood the significance of the act wasn't for the tree necessarily, but it was important for me and for the health of the community that I was a part of, that reciprocal and embedded relationships that we share with each other and with our environments are not only appreciated and understood, but also expressed and practiced, habituated as a lived understanding. And as I grew up, my first job as a teenager was working in my dad's office, going through records of all the historical treaties and agreements and putting a sticky note wherever it's stipulated and their descendants forever. Uh, you might think this could lead naturally to an interest in Aboriginal Indigenous law and politics, but at the time I, I couldn't have been more resistant. Typical father-son stuff. When I was maybe 12 or 13, my dad asked me what role I saw being Métis would have in my life, and I said, well, of course it's always going to be a part of my identity, but I'm not going to make a career out of it like you did. I can almost see the smug look on his face, given where I ended up. Now, like many others at the law school, neither of my parents ever attended university, uh, and despite their substantial contributions to their communities and even the country, when they passed away in my early 20s, they didn't have much in the way of financial resources to leave behind. I was on the verge of leaving school to work full-time when I was fortunate to find a job at the university, running workshops, teaching philosophy for a program that gave students who didn't quite have the achievements they needed to be accepted a chance to earn it. And this allowed me to stay enrolled part-time and graduate with a bachelor's and then a master's degree of philosophy and ethics. It was about at this point that I decided with $30,000 in debt and zero personal resources that I should go to law school. And while I'm at it, why not apply to one of the most prestigious and expensive law schools in the country, I figured I probably wouldn't get in anyways. When I got the call from Professor Ben Allery, I had a place that I, ha I had the place here at the University of Toronto. Um, I felt briefly very excited and then almost immediately nauseous. I had no idea how I was going to be able to afford moving to Toronto, let alone living and paying tuition here for three years. But I developed an interest in socially responsible and benefit corporation. I loved the idea that corporations could have different DNA, that both profit and purpose could be enshrined at the core of a company's legal operating code. Uh, and U of T was the best place to pursue that. What I was surprised to learn was that U of T also provided the most financial support. Uh, through bursaries and financial aid, from assisting with moving costs to helping find an affordable place to live, the law school made it possible with virtually no financial resources on my part to come here and pursue a world-class education. Now, while at the law school, I've, I've been able to reconnect with an indigenous community that I lost touch with since my parents passed. I've been able to deepen my interest and understanding of Aboriginal and Indigenous law, and I've had history come full circle with the art of 
the son of my father's mentor, Duke Redbird, is now displayed in the main hall of the law school itself. Now I have opportunities that I'd never thought would be possible for me, with abilities to be of service in ways that I never thought I could have, and with a debt that's manageable and that doesn't determine my career. If your support can help make even a fraction of the inspired and driven students that I've had the privilege of sharing the last three years with more free to pursue careers of public benefit, then it'll do more than change the lives of those students. It'll affect the culture of the legal profession. And instead of a generation of students that are burdened with debt and sent to make their own way in the world and find some way to eventually pay it off, we can have a generation of law students and lawyers who feel a deep sense of not financial but personal indebtedness and a desire to give back and pay it forward in service to a broad community even a society that supported them when they needed it most. So thank you for contributing to and believing in that change, in that future, and in us.